What's up guys, Houndish here, and today we are jumping back into Destiny 2 with a couple of updates and minor news mentions. So today we'll touch on some developments in the Cradle this week, and some of the stuff that's happening as we draw closer to the culmination of this Season 11 story. But additionally, we'll talk about upcoming quests, when we can expect certain content beats, and we do have a couple of new details for Solstice of Heroes, as well as commentary from Bungie on a few elements in the game, and some other quick updates in the video. So, if you guys enjoy this one, feel free to drop us any of your thoughts down in the comment section, but otherwise, let's get into it. For now, we should start out, as always, by talking about some of the content this week. So. The means to an end quest comes with the same steps we've seen previously, but then we head into the cradle on Io, and this week we had some more dialogue from Eris, but as for the tree, progress seems to be kind of halted on any further change at the moment. And looking into the future for the seasonal story, from the available lore pages now, we have around 5 or 6 weeks remaining, which was supposed to end roughly when Beyond Light was due to launch in September, before the delay. Regardless, it looks like things will kind of come to a head with this story in the coming weeks, and we've seen sneaky previews of upcoming stuff. However, if you want to recap Averis' dialogue this week, here it is. This message translates to a state of decontamination, something like purity. Though this conjugation emphasizes loss, a purity through subtraction, willingly or otherwise. The darkness could be speaking to the taken memories of new guardians, or the boundaries we accept when we follow the light. The limitations forced upon us. Mm. In truth, it could refer to many things. So as I understand it right here, Eris and the Lore Pages are referring to our light and the influence of the Traveler, and the darkness challenges the fact that we accept the Traveler so openly, questioning that any Guardian's memory of previous life is kind of wiped when they become light bearers. And it's definitely an interesting thought for our Guardian, but it's something we were actually reminded of last year with the Dawning, when we had that lore teasing that Prince Aldrin was now a Guardian, with no recollection of his previous events, his sister the Awoken, or the fatal ambush of Kate Six. So it was a pretty good example of how the process works, but let us know what you think of the lore this season, guys. And also, with the Aldrin story still wide open, I'm really hopeful that we'll get some of that story in year four. If we look at the past year, they did bring big characters like Saint-14 into the mix mid-year, so I guess a mid-year character introduction is something that's entirely possible, but we'll have to wait and see. Speaking of interesting things associated with Eris Morn, but rated E for Eric, who now works inside of Bungie's consumer products team, did share this replica of the shard from Oryx's sword, and that was the one that we saw in the cutscene as part of the Taken King. And a few people do wonder if this could mean anything for content in the future, especially since we know that Eris is going to be linked to some of the upcoming content. Of course, we don't know if this is official work, so to speak, but also this is the shard that we saw in each of the exotic swords from back in Destiny 1, so that's pretty cool, and folks do wonder if the artifact will be relevant again in the future somehow. Who knows, could it be possible that at some point in the future maybe it'll be of importance to Savathun? I'm certainly not the wisest on that piece of lore, so give us any insights that you have down below. A few folks have been asking this week, where is the next exotic quest for the season? And of course that would be the evacuation quest, which ultimately lands us Traveller's Chosen. And so originally folks had stated that it could drop in early August according to the Eververse schedule, and this was the case at the launch of the season. However, this was updated, and Today in Destiny now shows a scheduled date of September 8th for the ornament, so we're going to have to wait a bit longer. It is possible that the quest could be a kind of multi-week thing, taking a little bit of time to complete, but we won't know until we get it whether that's going to be the case. However, when that quest does start to finish, we'll be in what the database is currently describing as an end of season event. And so, spoiler alert, but as we'd mentioned, some of that quest will involve us saving Rasputin from the invasion, and we'll also get a special emblem drop at the time, so this is all going to be happening in tandem with the evac quest. And when we think back to what we saw with the Almighty going down last season, it has the potential to be something pretty cool, but again, we'll have to wait and see, and possibly that's going to be early September before we're looking at it. Here though, we had a pretty interesting post from Chrome Flux, breaking down some of how Solstice of Heroes will work for this year, and we get a few useful details here. So, of course initially, the European Aerial Zone is set to return from what we've seen, but the big draw for the event will be the new armor and the ornaments that kind of make them glow, so Chrome shared some art station concepts for the full ornamented armor sets. And I'm not sure who originally posted these, if you Google search them, it does come up with an art station profile, but it kind of looks like it's been made private or something like that, so maybe they weren't supposed to be shared yet. Either way, they do look really cool, initially with just the ornament, all the kind of cracks on them, and then the second image that shows them charged by the matching subclass. 
They're definitely pretty neat. But they point out in the post that we can see the coloured ornaments are going to be sold via Eververse, so we'll have the individual upgrade steps to do for the armour, but the ornaments and glows are listed on Light GG as drops from bundles, so ornaments with built-in subclass coloured glows, the intensity increases with super energy charge. So again, I'm assuming that those will match the colour of the subclass. And we've got the Warlock bundle, but there is also the Hunter and Titan bundle. And JP Deathblade's website, Today and Destiny, does display the kind of pricing for the bundles. So currently, as they're listed in the database, you have the option of either spending silver or bright dust. And so looking at the pricing for that, we've got 6,000 bright dust as option one or 1,500 silver. And I imagine there'll definitely be some opinions about that. 6,000 is definitely a lot for one set of ornaments, I suppose, but it's good that we have the option to do that. And of the items in the Eververse store, I suppose they are some of the cooler looking items, especially when you've gone through the work of actually unlocking those armor sets. So I'd be curious to hear what you guys think about it. And then additionally, there is going to be a reward for completing all three of the armor sets, kind of like what we saw with the event last year. And Chrome pointed out that on Light GG, there's a dummy item for that particular reward, which lists a legendary vehicle. It's currently classified, but completing the Solstice Legendary Armor set on all three classes will drop it. So that gives a bit more of an insight into the kind of earnable rewards, and we have spoken about some of the steps to upgrade the armor pieces previously. We should also add here on the subject of the event that JP Deathblade pointed out in the update yesterday, there weren't any kind of major changes, but there's a new preview for Eva Levante that shows where she's going to be located for Solstice of Heroes this year, obviously bang in the middle of the Tower Courtyard, which is where we'll also see that new Statue of Heroes. But there are additional items as well, as always Eververse will be stocked with a few different Solstice themed things, so some of them actually have a similar theme to the armor ornaments that we're getting for the glows, and have the kind of cracks or lightning style effect on the surface as well. But once again, those will be Eververse specific purchases. And if you're curious, you can check out what Bungie currently have scheduled for the Eververse store on todayindestiny.com. I'll link that one down below. Might give you a bit of a heads up on some of the stuff that's going to roll out through the course of the event. And so that's the new Solstice info there. Bungie are due to give us more info about the event later on this week as well. So possibly we'll get a trailer, but otherwise some kind of blog post reveal with details about how more of it is going to work. So be sure to stay tuned here for that. But a point to make right here that may potentially be linked to things like the Solstice armor grind, but players are still prying for an answer about how transmog is going to work. And somebody said, we want a yes or no answer as to whether we will be able to transmog armor from our collections. And for now, Cosmo is saying that as soon as we can share a solid yes or no, we'll do so, but we don't want to make any promises that could result in players dismantling items until we are ready. And so obviously Bungie are still working on some of how these systems are going to impact the game. And as they kind of indicated last week, they're saying it's going to potentially take a little while before we get more details about mechanics and new systems. And so maybe later on in August, but potentially even later than that is really when we can expect Bungie to start talking about it. Either way, I'll have you posted as soon as we do get more details. A couple of additional roundups here from destinyroundup.com. But Bungie Devs pointed out that the guiding game's helping hand emblems for Leviathan and the raid lairs is no longer something you can actually get in the game. I didn't realize they'd taken that out, but you can't acquire it anymore. Once again, feedback about the kill 150 fallen bounty has been passed along. They've also considered feedback about separating ghost shells from the perks. And so they're letting the teams know that this is something the community are interested in. Once again, they say they'll have news for PC Game Pass members later in 2021. And that would be regarding Destiny coming to the Xbox Game Pass, but on the PC platform specifically. And they'd also said last week that they're continuing to work on improvements to Destiny 2 to combat cheating. But also, they will be refining Gambit into one mode, and pretty soon they're going to speak about how that'll be changing. So just some additional game-related things to bear in mind there. Also, just yesterday, we had the patch notes for the update that I spoke about in the weekly reset video, but the preview that Bungie gave us last Thursday actually had all of the changes inside of that update, so there wasn't anything kind of unexpected. But I will link those patch notes below if you want to check them out. But a thing to mention very quickly here, Project xCloud has now revealed a date. So, of course, this is Xbox's new kind of mobile gaming platform. And they're saying for Android, it's going to launch on September 15th. The article does say that available titles will include Destiny 2, Gears 5, Minecraft Dungeons, and a few other things, so we're not sure if that means D2 will be available immediately. But it's pretty interesting that that platform will be up and running, and I'd be curious to see that comparison between Stadia and the new platform, so let us know if you've used Project X Cloud or even Stadia down in the comment section. For today though guys, that is everything we have to speak about in the video, so as always, I hope you have enjoyed this one. Give us any of your thoughts down in the comments section, but also a rating really helps me out down below as well. 
Feel free also to get subscribed if you have enjoyed the content so that I can keep you posted on everything we're going to be getting a little bit further down the road. But otherwise, guys, for now, whatever you get up to, I hope you have an awesome day.